In this video, we want to consider important ideas in junior SMR round 2 and solve similar problems from latest exams of prestigious exams like HMMT, Harvard MIT Math Tournament, SUMAC, Stanford University Mathematics Camp, BMO British Mathematical Olympiad, AMC American Mathematics Competitions, AMI, and SMO. We want to solve similar problems with related ideas. The ideas we want to work on eight important ideas, SFFT concerning small examples, and so on. And we want to see how these ideas are useful. For example, from SFFT, we solve two problems, one from S Singapore Junior Round 2, one from UK Senior Mathematical Challenge for concerning small example, one problem from last Junior SMO Round 2 and similar problem. Exactly similar problem as you can see PI and it's so much similar these two problems. It is from SUMAC Stanford uh, University Mathematics Camp 2022, which this idea also useful in 2023 SUMAC. The next one working on greatest integer function. Problem from Junior SMO, problem from AMC, problem from PMO, problem from AME, which is after AMC. Now. Uh, when we have minimum and maximum in combinatorics, one problem from junior round to SMO, one problem from BMO, British Mathematical Olympiad round 2, 2019. Next idea, we want to work on important ideas in geometry, which is so much useful in uh, junior SMO round 2, ratio lemma and Lausitz theorem, angle bisector theorem, and we solve this geometry problem. Next one, invariant. Uh, which we solved two problems from 2019 SMO and also one problem from SUMAC 2022, one problem from HMMT Harvard MIT Math Tournament 2023. Next idea divisibility and modular, one problem from junior SMO round two. If you want to solve more problems, feel free to send a message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. Here, inequality, we have an important idea in inequalities find when equality holds to figure out coefficients so much useful and we can apply it for this problem of junior SMO and I wrote let me tell you five six homeworks with this idea because so much useful there are around 50 70 problems like this that I have that you can solve them with this because when you want to use, for example, AM, GM, and other inequalities, basic inequalities that are useful from basic level to IMO, you should know how to figure out coefficients. With the idea I show you, you can solve this problem and also this problem and many other problems. Okay, so let's start with first idea. Simon's favorite factoring trick. Let's solve first this junior SM around two, then this UKMT problem from UK. Senior Mathematical Challenge. Okay, the first problem of 2022 Junior is somewhere around two. Let n be a six digit number. The first three digits and the last three digits of n form two three digit numbers. Okay, so let's write it here. Okay, I write n as a, b, c, d. D, E, F. I draw a line here to show that it is not product, it is a number. Because it says, so first, when it says the first three digits and the last three digits of n form two three digit numbers, it means what? What can we conclude here? It means that first one is a three digit number, A is not zero. Second one, D, E, F is a three digit number, means D is not zero. There it says it turns out that the product of these two three digit numbers is one seventh of the value of n. It means what? ABC times DEF equal to one seventh of ABC DEF. Okay. Now here I multiply first by seven. It says find the value of n. I multiply first by seven. And it will be 7 times ABC times DEF equal to ABC DEF. So because here we have ABC DEF separately, let's separate them also here. Here it will be DEF 
plus ABC times what? Times 1000. Because look, it is ABC 000 plus DEF. It means ABC times 1000. Okay. So let me show you the reason. Look, ABC 000 plus DEF. Sum of these two numbers equal to A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay? So when I want to write A, B, C, D, E, F, I say D, E, F plus A, B, C, 0, 0, 0. When you have three zeros at the end of a number, it means times 1,000. Okay? Now, in next step, we consider this number as X, this number as Y, this number equal to X. Oh, sorry, because D, E, F is Y, and this one is X. So 7xy equal to y plus 1000x. So when we see problems like this, you take all things to one side. I want to show you Simon's favorite factoring trick or general form of that. You say 7xy minus 1000x minus y equal to 0. Now I want to factorize, especially it's useful when we have what we are working with integers. When you see a coefficient here, 7, you should multiply by 7 again. And it will be 49xy minus 7000x minus 7y equal to 0. Now I want to factorize. So let's see. I have 7x here. I have 7y here equal to what? 7x times 7y, 49xy. This one has been created. Negative 7000x. So I should place here what? Minus 1,000 times 7x, negative 7,000x. For negative 7y, we place negative 1 here, okay? Now, it is equal to what? Negative 1 times negative 1,000 is 1,000. So, it is 1,000 more than this. So, I write 1,000 here. Now, I want to consider the cases. As you can see, x and y are three-digit numbers. So, x and y are at least... 1,000 less than uh, seven digit numbers, uh, three digit numbers, 100 less than we call 999. So we understand that 7x minus 1 is at least 700 minus 1. So 7x minus 1 is at least 700 minus 1, 699. So if I want to factorize the only divisor of 1,000, which is greater than or equal to 699, here it should be 1,000. And here it should be 1, the only possible case. It is factorizing 1,000. 7x minus 1 equal to 1,000. 7y minus 1,000 equal to 1. So if you add 1 to both sides, 7x equal to 1,001. 1,001 has a famous factorization. It is 7 times 11 times 13. So we conclude x is 11 times 13, which if you calculate is 1, 4, 3. Here again, we conclude 7y equal to 1001 if you add 1 to both sides. And again, 1001 is similar to this, and we can say y equal to 143. So x equal to 143, y equal to 143, and we know n is. And n equal to what? n equal to a, b, c. Here we've written a, b, c, d, e, f. a, b, c is 143, d, e, f is 143. So n is 143, 143, and SFFT was what here? This factorizing, we call it SFFT, but you don't need to mention the name, only to remind the next problems when you see something like this that you can factorize. Because someone call SFFT when we don't have coefficient, for some coefficient instead of 7 we have 1, then you don't need to multiply by 7. But here we can say general form of SFFT, or only you should know how to factorize when we have x y something times x y something times x something times y in integer it was first problem of this idea now let's try second one okay this problem of uk last uk smc the numbers uh, you should participate in smc then bmo1 then bmo2 like for example for america amc then amy then you some of for example singapore you participate in round one SMO, then round two. Okay. This is the numbers X, Y, P, and Q are all integers. X and Y are variables. And P and Q are constant and positive. 
The four integers are related by the equation D, so it is similar to S of T again. When Y takes its maximum possible value, which expression is equal to Y minus X? So, we know XY equal to PX plus QY. So, if we take again, like previous problem, we take all things to one side, like this one. 7XY equal to one plus Y plus 1000X, we've taken all things to one side and then factorize it. So here, xy minus px minus qy equal to zero. But in previous problem, xy had coefficient seven, so we should multiply by seven. Here, coefficient is one. It means that we should multiply by one because one multiplying by one has no effect, so we don't need to do anything. So we write xy equal to what? I want to create minus px, so I, I've created xy. For minus px, I place minus p. For minus qy, I place minus qy. Then this part, the product, has minus p times minus q. pq more than this, so it should be pq. Now let's see. The problem says y takes its maximum value. So when y is maximum, because it is factorization of pq, when y is maximum, because p and q are constant, y minus p also is maximum. So it should be what PQ, and this one should be what 1, okay? Now it doesn't say they should be, uh, P and Q are positive, okay? So X minus Q is 1, and we conclude X is Q plus 1. Y minus P is PQ, and if we add P both sides, it will be Y equal to PQ plus P. Okay, let's see, does it satisfy all things in the problem? The numbers x, y, integers, x and y are variables. P and Q are constant positive. The four integers are related, okay? When y takes its maximum possible value, which is, which expression is equal to y minus x. So y minus x, if we subtract, is PQ plus P minus Q minus 1. And now, if we want to, again, we can use like SFFT, we write PQ, we want negative Q, we place negative 1, we want plus P, we want we place plus 1, P minus 1, Q plus 1, so it will be choice D. Okay, it has also another solution. From here, you find Y in terms of X and C under which condition it is maximum, and you will reach again same thing here. Okay, if you want to solve more problems in AMC and other examples with SFFT and other important ideas, as I said before, feel free to send message my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. Third problem of last junior SMO. Let n equal to p1, p2, 2, pk be the product of distinct primes. p1 to pk, where k greater than 1. Find all possible values of n if it is a possible of pi minus 1, uh, if it is a multiple of pi minus 1 for each i1 to k. Okay, the next problem of this idea is from SUMAC, which is so much important and useful for your CV for applying top universities if you can pass this. And if you want to learn important ideas that are useful for junior SMO, HMMT, SUMAC, and all these exams, feel free to send message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. Okay, I want to use a small example. At first, I say, so it says k greater than 1. I use, uh, in many problems, there are different aspects. And you can use a small example here on n, on k, but um, after solving some problem, you will understand which of them is better. But also, if you couldn't understand, try to check all things that you think may be useful. So let's consider k2. Pause the video and try first on your own. n equal to p1, p2. The problem says n is multiple of pi minus 1, so p1 minus 1 divides n, p2 minus 1 also divides n, so p1 minus 1 divides n is p1, p2. p2 minus 1 divides p1, p2. I want to prove that p1 minus 1 and p1 are relatively prime. Why? If you have two consecutive numbers and their GCD equal to d, I want to prove d is 1. Uh, you should work, you should know a little about divisibility modulo for these problems. If you don't know again, you can send message my WhatsApp number because it is GCD greatest common divisor, so it is divisor of n and n plus 1.
you can subtract d dy is 1 and because the def in the definition of gcd it should be positive because d is a divisor of 1 it can be plus minus 1 but because d is positive it is 1 so it is 1 and we have euclid lemma euclid's lemma is what it's an obvious lemma no so you don't need i think to mention this one but just to know if a dy is bc and GCD of A and B is 1. What can we conclude means A and B are relatively prime. They have no common factor. So what divides what? A divides C. So I want to use these two things here. I know GCD of P1 minus 1 and P1 is 1. So by Euclid's lemma. Why? Because there are consecutive numbers here. I prove for NN plus 1. By Euclid's lemma, you can ignore P1. P1 minus 1 divides P2. P2 minus 1 divides P1. Okay. Now, for this part, if n is odd, I want to prove without loss of generality, suppose that p1 is less than p2, okay? I want to prove p1 is 2. If, because if p1 is not 2, means the n is odd. If n is odd, then we know. Primes are odd. pi minus 1 divides n. n is odd, but pi minus 1 is even. Even divides odd, which is contradiction, okay? So, we conclude by this that P1 is 2. N is even, so first prime divisor is 2. So, this condition will be satisfied. And P2 minus 1 divides 2. It means what? P2 minus 1 is a divisor of 2, which is 1 or 2. So, P1 is 2 or 3, but 2 is not possible because P2. Because P2 is greater than P1, P1 is 2, P2 greater than 2. So it's not possible, so P2 is 3. So P1 is 2, P2 is 3. And N is what? P1, P2. So in this case, N is 2 times 3, which is 6. So when K is 2, the answer, the only answer is 6. Now, let's solve it for K3. For K3, N is P1, P2, P3. Again, we can say without loss of generality, P1 is less than P2, less than P3. And again, you can prove that P1 is 2 with a similar way, because if n is odd, then P1, Pi minus 1, even divides odd number contradiction. Now, we know P1 minus 1 divides again P1, P2, P3, because it is related to P1, it is relatively prime to P1. Like previous part, it divides P2, P3. P2 minus 1 divides P1, P3. And P3 minus 1 divides P1, P2. Now, here, we know because P1 is 2, this one will be satisfied because 1 divides P2, P3. The next one, P2 minus 1 divides 2, P3. So P2 minus 1 is a divisor of 2, P3. Okay, P2 minus 1 is a divisor of this, so it should be 1 or 2. But because we know P3 is greater, P2 is greater than P1, it cannot be 1 because P2 will be 2. It should be 2 or P3 or 2 P3. But we know P2 is less than P3. If we answer these cases, look, P2 is 3 or P3 plus 1. Or 2p3 plus 1. We know p2 is less than p3. So these cases are not possible and p2 is 3. Now, we replace 2 and 3 here. It's 6. So p3 minus 1 is 1. It is not possible because p3 greater than them. 1, if we write divisor of 6, 1, to 3, 6. Not possible, not possible. In this case, p3 will be 4, which is not prime. In this case, P3 will be 7. So in this case, N is 2 times 3 times 7, which is 6 times 7, 42. So N is 42. Now let's check K4. Okay, now let's check K equal to 4. Then N equal to P1, P2, P3, P4. And without loss of generality, we can conclude P1 less than P2, less than P3, less than P4. Again, we can prove it is 2, it is 3, it is 7. Why? P1 is 2 because, again, like previous time, N is odd contradiction. P1 minus 1 divides that for P2. P2 minus 1 divides. 
P1, P3, P4, which is 2, P3, P4. But because P2 is less than P3, we can't use these things. Again, we can conclude the only possible case is 2. So P2 is 3. With a similar thing, you can prove P3 is 7. Now only P4 is left. P4 minus 1 divides 2 times 3 times 7, which is 42. So P4 minus 1. Because P4 is greater than 7 and is a prime, it is at least 11, okay? Because it is at least 11, so P4 minus 1 is at least 10. So if we want to check 2 times 7, 14, 21, 42. So P4 equal to 15, 22, 43. Uh, 43, these two numbers are not prime. P4 is 43. So we found this, and n equal to 2 times 3 times 7, 42 times 43. And if we calculate 42 times 43, it's 2 times this, 86, 4 times 3, 12. We have 1, 4, 4, 16 plus 1, 17. We will see 6, this, 1, 8, 0, 6. So for 4 primes, we found this. Now if you check 5 primes, then we can prove that for, we don't have any other good number. Why well, again you say okay n equal to p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 we don't have any choice for p5 why because p1 again we can say without loss of generality suppose p1 less than p2 less than p3 less than p4 less than p5 p1 is 2 p2 is 3 p3 with similar proof again if you had any question about this proof or any part Feel free or wanted to learn more things, feel free to send a message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. 7 and this one 43. So, when we want to consider P5 minus 1 divides 2 times 3 times 7 times 43. And we conclude that P5 minus 1 divides. P5 is greater than 43, so P5 minus 1 is greater than 42. So, we can, if we don't consider 43, it will be what? P5 minus 1 is at most 42, which is not possible. So we should consider 43. So we consider 43. Uh, and P5, because it is odd, it should be even. P5 minus 1. So let's ignore this one. It is odd minus 1, even. So 2 times 43. 2 times 3 times 43. 2 times 7 times 43, 2 times 3 times 7 times 43. We should check these four cases because they should be even and they should contain 43. Okay, P5 minus 1. So it will be 2 times 43, 86. 2 times 3, 6. 6 times 43, 6 times 3, 18. We have 1, 6 times 4. 24 plus 1, 25. 7 times 43, 7 times 3, 21. We have 2, 7 times 4, 28, plus 2, 30. So 2 times that is 602. 2 times 3 times 7 times 43. We've calculated that 42 times 43 was 1806. So 1806. So P5 minus P5, we add 1, both sides 87, 259. 603, 1807. So for 87, 3 divides that, so it is bad for 603, 3 divides that. 25718, okay, 3 doesn't divide. What about 7? 3 times 7, 21, 49, 7 divides this contradiction, this one. 7 divides this or not, 240, uh, 57, no. 11 divides that, 70. 66, no, 13 divides that. If you divide 1807 by 13, it will be 113, it will be 50, then it will be 339, 11, 7 here, 9, 7, 2, 11, 0. Okay, so 1, we will see that 13 divides this number. So, uh, here I mean that. Uh, this is 7 divides this, so this one is bad because 3 divides this, 7 divides this, bad, 3 divides this, 13, so they are not prime. So again, for k greater than 5 also, we don't have any choice for p5. 
and we solve this problem. Next problem of SUMAC, it's for Stanford University Mathematics Camp 2022. This problem exactly will be solved by a small example. I release the solution of this SUMAC. If you had question or wanted to learn complete idea or want to solve more problems that are useful in junior SML, senior SML, open section, and also prestigious exam for USA, AMC, AME, USAMO for UK, BMO, SMC, JMC, IMC. And before BMO1 and BMO2, feel free to send message my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. So you can use my previous video to see its answer. Okay, next idea working with GIF greatest integer function, divisibility and modula, a little useful. I will show you here and concerning small examples, the most useful idea. For this problem of just junior SM around two, we have also similar idea in AMC, PMO here and AMI. Let's solve first this problem of junior SM around 2. It says let n be a positive integer. Prove that n root 19 times of this sign fractional part. And the problem explains. Fractional part of n root 19 is greater than what? So let's prove it. Okay, so for this one, if we want to solve the problem. Okay, let's, uh, if you want to solve, you will see that how it's a little hard. But let, let me tell you something. In general, when you work with fractional part and integer part, this idea is useful. You write it as n root 19k plus r, which k is integer part, and r is fractional part, and r is greater than or equal to 0 to 1. So much useful. At first you think, okay, it's obvious, but we can solve hard problem in quadratic formula. You will see. For example, in this AMC problem, in this one, in this one, you will see how this form is useful. So here, if you want to prove, you will see, okay, it's a little hard. So we try to use a small example. Suppose n is one. Root 19 times fractional part of root 19. Fractional part of root 19 is what? If we consider intervals, root 19 is between which two integers? Greater than four, less than five, root 19. So it will be fractional part. So it will be root 19 times root 19 minus 4. We want to prove why it is less than 1. Root 19 times root 19 is 19 minus 4 root 19 is less than 1. And then we take 1 to left side, negative 4 root 19 to right side, 19 minus 1, 18, less than 4 root 19. It is equivalent, equivalent. Then we divide both sides by 2. It is equivalent that 9 is less than 2 root 19. And it is equivalent, we raise to the power of 2. 81 is less than 4. Let's see here. It's, oh, it says great. Prove that greater than 1. Yes, that's the reason. This part is greater, greater than 1, greater than 1, greater than 1. 9 squared is 81, 4 times 19 is 76. We will see this part correct, 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 correct. Okay. Now let's, for example, prove n2. We will see 2 root 19, fractional part of 2 root 19. Now I want to find fractional part. 2 root 19 is 4 times square root of 4 times 19, which is square root of 76. And if you consider number line, uh, root 76 is greater than 8 less than 9. And then we can say, okay, this is 2 root 19, 2 root 19 minus 8. We want to prove it is greater than 1. Okay. This times this is 76 minus 16 times square root of 19. Why it is greater than 1? 76 minus 1 is 75. Why it is greater than 16? Root 19. Now, if we raise to the power of 2, 75 squared. 75 squared, 75 is 3 times 25, okay? If we raise to the power of 2, it will be 9 times 6, 2, 5. 
plus 25 squared 16 squared is 256 times 90. Okay, and if we calculate that, you can you can multiply it by 9, it will be 9 times 545, we have 4. 9 times 2, 18 plus 4, 22, we have 2, 9 times 6, 54, plus 2, 56. Why, it is greater than this part. So if you multiply, you can multiply, or you can say it's 20 minus 1. 20 times this is 5, 1, 2, 0, minus 2, 5, 6. 10 minus 6 is 4. Then it will be 1, 11 minus 5 is 6, then it is 0, 10 minus 2 is 8, 4. And we will see it is correct, so it is correct, so this one is correct. And we understood how to solve for general n. But now let's for, solve for the uh, 4n1 and 2, we have understood for 3, 4, all of them we can prove by this idea. But we want to find a way to prove it for general n. So let's... And a new page. Now I want to prove for general n. I say n root 19 times fractional part of n root 19. Why it is greater than 1. So as you can see in all of them, we've considered n root for some 2 root 19 is between which two integers. Here are between which two integers. So we say suppose n root 19 is between k. It's like when we write k plus r. This is between which two integers? Suppose it is between k and k plus 1, okay? So n root 19 is a point here. So it will be what? It will be n root 19 times n root 19 minus k. Why it is greater than 1, okay? Now, this part is 19 and a squared minus k n root 19. Why it is greater than 1. So, like previous time, when we have root, like this part, look, we take root to right side, other things to left side, and raise to the power of 2. So, let's use the same thing 19 and a squared minus 1, we take 1 to left side, this one to right side. Why it is greater than this? Now, it is equivalent to this, equivalent to this, equivalent to this one. It is equivalent that we raise to the power of 2, 19 and squared minus 1 squared. Why it is greater than k squared? 19, k squared, n squared. Okay, now let me tell you something. Here, we know k is less than... Let me write here first. k is less than n root 19. So, k squared is less than 19 n squared. Now, because um, the two parts are integers, k squared and 19 n squared, we can say k squared is at most what? Less than or equal 19 n squared minus 1. Now we consider two cases. The first case is k if k is squared exactly equal to 19 n squared minus 1. If k is squared is less than or equal 19n squared minus 2. In this case, we can prove this inequality. Why? Because then 19k squared n squared is... Let me tell you by intuitive thinking how I can understand that it is good. Because look, 19n squared minus 2 plus 19n squared, some of them equal to 2 times 19n squared minus 2. Let me show you. Look, 19n squared minus 1 plus 19n squared minus 1 equal to what? 2 times 19n squared minus 1. And 19n squared plus k squared. If k squared is this, plus 19n squared minus 2. Again, this part will be 2 times 19. It is equal to 2 times 19n squared minus 1. The sum equal, and we know when the sum equal, if the numbers are near to each other, it will be greater. Here, the numbers are near to each other. The difference is 0, these two numbers. So the product will be greater than this. Okay? It was by intuitive thinking. Now... We want to write it. I will write and prove 19k squared n squared is less than or equal 19 times 19n squared minus 2 times n squared. And I want to prove why it is less than 19n squared minus 1 whole squared. And this part will be what? 19, 19n squared, n squared, 19n squared, n to the 4 minus 2 times 19, 38n squared. Why it is less than 19 squared n to the 4 minus 2 times the 38 n squared plus 1. We can subtract, subtract. 
it is equivalent that one one greater than zero we proved okay now one case is left i i, I want to consider k squared 19 and squared minus one is not possible here we prove let me write case one again here so if you can't say you can prove you should prove it reject it by mods so try first on your own pause the video look by this thing k squared is negative one or if you consider mod 19 or 18. And now let's consider all cases. We know k mod 19 can be 0 or plus minus 1. Minus 1 is similar to 18. Plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 5, plus minus 6, plus minus 7, plus minus 8, plus minus 9. Okay, only these cases because plus 10 is congruent to negative 9. Now k squared is congruent to what? 0, 1, 2 squared, 4, 3 squared, 9, 4 squared, 16, 5 squared, 25, minus 19, 6, 36 is negative 2 or 17, 49, 2 times 19, 38, 49 minus 38 is 11, 64, 64 minus 3 times this is 57, 7, 81, 81 minus 4 times is 76 is 5. So as you can see, we don't have any answer equal to 18. K squared can only have these numbers, mod 19. So it cannot be 18. So this case contradiction. And for this case, also case to be proved. So look, our proof was similar to the proof that we had for a small example. That's the importance of using a small example and you should learn. And for using a small example, there are many ways. And sometimes we have a small example inside some part of the problem if you get good at that you can solve many problems from basic level to imo if you want to learn that as i said before feel free to send message to my whatsapp number in the description and comments okay now let's solve this problem of amc with the same idea greatest integer function it says how many positive integers n satisfy n plus 1000 over 7 equal to GIF or integer part of square root of n, 2, 4, 6, 30, 32. Okay, again, because we are working with integer part of square root of n, I want to use same idea again. I consider square root of n in k plus r, with this part is integer part, and r is fractional part. Okay, so, and we know that r is from... We know r is at least 1, greater than or equal to 0, less than 1, by the definition of fractional part. And now if we consider this, n first, n plus 1000 over 70 equal to integer part of root n, which will be what? k. And now because root n is this, I can say root n equal to k plus r, so I want to find n. So if we raise to the power of 2, n equal to k squared plus r squared plus 2kr and let's replace it here we know from this part n plus 1000 equal to 70k n is what n is k squared plus r squared plus 2kr plus 1000 equal to 70k now if you consider here it is a quadratic equation in terms of r and we know r is at least 0 1 now here it's useful so let's rewrite it, r squared plus r, 2kr plus k squared plus 1000 minus 70k equal to 0. Now, r is what then? r is negative b negative 2k plus minus square root of b squared, which is 4k squared, minus 4ac minus 4 times 1 times k squared plus 1000 minus 70k all over what all over 2a which is 2 by quadratic formula now here we can say what at first we should select plus sign or minus sign we cannot select minus sign because then r will be negative and we know k is positive greater than or equal to 0 why because it says positive integer n, so square root of n, if you consider also, if you consider n1 square root of 1, k is at least 1. So because k is positive integer, so this part shouldn't be minus, it should be plus. And we divide by 2, it will be k 
And we can also divide, let's divide 2, 2. Here inside square root, it will be 4. So it will be k minus k plus square root of k squared minus k squared 0 minus minus 70k. 70k minus 1000, okay? Now it is our r. So we know this r should be from greater than or equal to 0, less than 1. Let's check this one. 70k minus 1000 less than 1. Now, this part you take negative k to right side, k is less than or equal 70k minus 1000. And then it is we can calculate k squared is less than or equal 70k minus 1000. And then we can say k squared minus 70k plus 1000. Is less than or equal to zero. Now we know it is what? It opens up. It is a quadratic equation. So if you find the roots, it should be between the roots. Okay? So let's find the roots here. K is what? Is 70 plus minus the square root of 70 squared, which is 4900 0, 0, minus 4000. Over what? Over 2. So it will be 70 plus minus. Square root of 900 is 30 over 2. So it will be 70 minus 30, 40 over 2, 20 and 50. So we understand k. One answer is k from 20 to 50. It has to be. Now we know both conditions should be satisfied. So let's consider next condition. Let's add a page. So here we take negative k to right side, square root of. 70k minus 1000 is less than negative k to right side k plus 1. So we raise because both sides are positive, greater than or equal to 0, we raise to the power of 2. And we can say 70, uh -huh. and let me tell you something, inside square root also should be positive, okay? So we know 70k minus 1000 should be greater than or equal to 0. We can divide by 10. So k should be greater than or equal 100 over 7. So k should be greater than or equal 15. Let's see. There's 14 point something. Okay, its first condition should be satisfied. Second condition. So we understand because second because of second condition, this one also will be satisfied. Now, this one, if it raised to the power of 2, 70k minus 1000 is less than k plus 1 squared, which is k squared plus 2k plus 1. Now, if we take all things to the right side, k squared minus 68k plus 1001. Now, it opens up and it should be positive. So, we understand if we find the roots, it should be after this root or before this root. So, let's find the roots. k equal to negative b, 68 plus minus square root of 68 squared minus 4 times 1001 all over 2. So if you divide by 2, it will be 34 plus minus square root of, uh, inside square root, you should divide by 4, so it will be 34 squared minus 1001. Now let's multiply 34 by 34, it will be 4 times 4, 16, we have 1, 4 times 3, 12 plus 1, 13, 3 times 4, 12, we have 1, 3 times 3, 9 plus 1, 10, 6, 5, 1, 1. So it will be 34 plus minus, Square root of 34 squared minus 1001. If you subtract 1001, it will be 5, uh, 5, 1, 155. Okay? So, if you find the roots, let's see. Square root of 155, it is 34 plus minus, it is 12 point something. So, 34 plus 12 is 48 point something. And 34 minus 12 is... We can say 22, but minus something, 21 point something. So we conclude that k should be less than 21 point something, less than or equal 21, or k is greater than equal things, so greater than or equal 49. And if we want to consider cases, third condition, uh, less than or equal 21, 20, 21 possible, And 49 greater than or equal 49, 49, 50. The idea is this.
Uh, here, let's correct this one. 34 plus 12 point something is 46 point something. And 34 minus 1222, yes, it is good. Now we know it's great less than or greater than or equal 47. So if we write, because from here we know it's been between 20 and 50, it will be 20, 21, and 47. 48, 49, 50. How many answers are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the answer is 6. Okay. Again, we've used k plus r and integer part, fractional part. It is this. Uh, let me show you this problem of senior SMO with junior SMO round two. We solve this idea. This problem of AMC, we use this idea. You can use this problem of PMO exactly with this idea here as homework number one. And this problem of Amy as homework number two. If you had question how to solve them, as I said before, feel free to send a message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. Okay. So let's go to the next idea. Uh huh. When we see and we want to solve minimum and maximum of something smallest here, for example, smallest or greatest or largest of something here, for example, it says, for which value of this it is possible and uh, again for this problem but I remember this problem is not so much related to let me show you the smallest max for, or for example largest let me erase it and add new problem from BMO it is round 1 and 2017 so let's correct it again look in this problem also we have the smallest of something in previous problem, we have a smaller sum, something minimum, largest, maximum. They have similar idea and similar structure of proof. So let's work on them. Okay, so let me tell you a strategy for solving these problems. First law, let's solve problem. Fifth problem, last problem of last junior SM around 2, 2022. It says, let n be an integer greater than 6 such that if the integer 6, 7, 8, so on to n are divided into two groups. So one of the groups contains the numbers ABC with AB equal to C, where A equal to B is allowed. Determine the smallest possible value of N. Okay, in these types of problem, for example, if you find an example that it works, because we want to find minimum, the answer will be less than or equal to that. And we should prove also with proof it is greater than equal what so it's good to work on both of them for example you reach 10 here 12 here then try a little this 11 12 so sometimes you can't reach same answer but you reach 11 12 so the answer is 11 or 12 you get mark of that if the answer is 11 you get mark of this part if the answer is 12 you get mark of this part so let's first work on the proof I say suppose part A, for example, we divide to two parts. If you have six, seven, eight, up to which number we can have if we, we want to find the greatest number that doesn't satisfy this condition. So up to 35, because six times six, 36. Now suppose consider group B, it is 36, 37, up to 36 squared minus one. And then you can add to group A, 36 squared then 6 times 36 squared if you consider product of two things here it won't reach this part 36 squared if you consider one from a one from b 6 times 36 squared it will be 6 to the 5 so if you write up to 6 to the 5 minus 1 it will be good uh, so we buy this because this example this part with proof we can say doesn't satisfy the condition and is up to 6 to the 5 minus 1. So we understand the answer is at least 6 to the 5. Now, let me tell you an example. An example is 6, 7 to 6 to the 5. I want to say that it satisfies the condition. Then I can say 6 to the 5 here for this example of n. How? I say, okay, let's prove it by contradiction. Suppose 6 is here. Then 6 squared has to be here. 6 to the 4 has to be here. 6 times 6 to the 4. 6 to the 5. 6 to the 5 has to be here. 
then we can say what six squared times six cubed is six to the five so six cubes suppose is here then six times six cubed six to the four contradiction so six to the five satisfies and the answer is six to the five okay so we proved this problem let's solve a similar problem this problem from Miamo round 1 2017 Okay, problem fifth of this exam, British Mathematical Olympiad, it says, it says if we take a 2 by 100 or 100 by 2 grid of unit squares and remove alternate squares from alongside the remaining 150 squares form a 100 cone. So, it means what you consider, let me show you, it, you consider this, and... Is this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, one, two, three. Okay, so it says we select one side and it is one, two, one hundred. You remove, for example, two, four, two, one hundred. If you remove these cells, so the rest will be a uh, one hundred comb. So it says Henry takes a two hundred by two hundred green of unit squares and chooses K of these squares and colors them so that. James is, un is unable to choose 150 uncolored squares, which form a 100 comb. What is the smallest possible value of k's? Again, we um, just consider the answer because it says the smallest. If we find an example that it works, it will be example. And here we should prove it. And for proof, one solution is to consider groups. So. Let's consider 200 by 200. We divide it like this 100 by 2, 100 by 2, 100 by 2. So in the first part, let's see what can we do. So it is this, this one, and we can select the mid one by this. Okay, and then we consider this part, this part, this part, this part, this part, and this part. Now, if you group them like this 100 by 2, 100 by 2, 100 by 2 again, here also 100 by 2, 100 by 2. 100 by 2. From each group, we should uh, remove at least two, or we should color at least two. Because look, if we color only one of them, then we can select this one like a 100 comp. So from each of them, we should remove at least two. How many are there? This first one, two, second one, and 100. So it will be what from each of them? We need 200. 2, 200 here. Also from each of them, 2, 200, 200, 400. So, uh, the answer is at least 400 by this proof that we consider the groups. Now let's see, can we find an example that with 400 to satisfy the problem? For satisfying this, we can consider like this one, this one, this one, this one. Then the free space here how many cells 99 so we continue like this and so it is what 100 one it is 200 so in the mid part we can say here one 100 so if if we want to consider now the rows right let's Consider, let me move it, this part. Okay, so if we consider, for example, this part. It is first one, second one, 99, 299, some of them 101. And when it is first one, it is 100, okay? And then from second one, from next part, you start, you reset. So as you can see, it comes like this, and we reach this part. And again, we have 99 space in the column. So again, 
we start from this part and we continue like this and here also we continue like this okay so if you consider any part like that we don't have 100 empty cells in each row and each column so we cannot have 100 combs so the answer is at most 400 by this example and so we can conclude our answer our answer is 400 okay so for all problems that you found you should find maximum minimum one part is by example one part is by proof if you want to solve more problems like this or learn new ideas uh, you can send message to my whatsapp now okay next part uh, we want to consider ratio lemma and analysis theorem angle by sector theorem these ideas there as i said before 40, 50 important formulas in geometry, for example, AI over ID is B plus C over A, AI times I, ID is B, AI times AI is BC. These formulas that, if you know the formulas in angle by sectors, altitude, medians, and perpendicular by sectors, in any problem, for example, you have bisectors or median or something like this, uh, and you can use them. Okay, so let's start. If you want to learn, uh, or if you want to know 40, 50 important formulas in geometry, as I said before, feel free to send message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comment. So let's solve the second problem. It says in triangle ABC, M is midpoint of AC, the bisector of A meets the side BC at P and MB at N. Suppose A and M is 90 degree, prove that CP equal to 2PM. So let's draw. So let's draw first triangle ABC. Is this? Let's extend this. It is A, it is B, it is C. M is midpoint of AC, some point like this. The bisector of A meets the side BC at P. Okay, so let's draw angle bisector of A. B, C at P, and M, B. So let's draw median. M, B at N. A and M is 90 degree, and we know it is angle by sector A over 2, A over 2. Prove that CP equal to 2 PM. So first, because it is angle by sector, and also it is altitude, we understand that A, B, M is isosceles triangle. How you can prove easily? By two angles and side between. That triangle ABN is congruent to triangle ANM. Why? Because A over 2, A over 2, AN equal to AN, 90 equal to 90. So we can say AB equal to AM, isosceles triangle. So it is equal to this. Here also we can use uh, uh, Menelaus's theorem. Uh, so here it is equal to this, this is equal to this, so it is perpendicular bisector. If we connect BP to PM, we can say this part equal to this part. And it says prove that CP equal to 2 PM. So this one is what this one is C. This one is what this one is also C. So because it is midpoint, we can say it is also C. So B equal to 2 C. By angle bisector theorem, we can say BP over PC equal to AB over AC. AB over AC is one half. So we conclude that PC, if we cross multiply, equal to 2BP. And here, because we prove BP equal to MP, so it is equal to 2PM. So PC equal to 2PM, and we've proved. Okay, so here we've used angle by sector. Also, we can use Menelaus theorem to find some lengths. And now let's solve second problem. Of geometry here is first problem of junior sum around 2019. Let's draw it. It says in the triangle ABC, AC equal BC. Okay, so and C equal to 90 degree. So let's draw it 130, 45, 135. If we continue, okay, it will be C. AC equal to BC. D is the midpoint of BC. Okay. And E is the point on AB such that AD is perpendicular to C. Okay, so let's draw AD is perpendicular to 21. Some point here. 
CE. Prove that A E equal to 2 E B. Okay. Now, here I say it's 90 degree. I know 45. It says A D was what? D is the midpoint. Okay. So when you want to find this part, we we use ratio lemma. Let me tell you, ratio lemma is what first. Also, again here you can use Menelaus theorem. Ratio lemma is for general point and arbitrary point P between B and C, or on line B C. Also, it can be outset. Sine A one over sine A two equal to B P over C P times B over C. Here, for example, if we consider this point alpha, this point 90 minus alpha, so sine alpha over sine 90 minus alpha by ratio lemma. The name is not so much famous. If you want to know the proof, you should use two sine law in triangle ABP and APC. Why? If you use sine law in triangle ABP, sine A1 over BP equal to sine B over AP. Uh, in triangle, if you use sine law in triangle ACP, sine A2 over PC equal to sine C over AP. If we divide, it will be sine A1 over sine A2. Here, PC will be numerator here, here it will be denominator, BP denominator here, numerator here, BP over PC, times sine B over sine C. And by sine law in triangle ABC, we know that it is also BPPC times B over C. It was the proof. So let's use it here. Sine alpha over sine 90 minus alpha. It is what? Here. It is AE over EB times BC over AC. BCAC because it is a isosceles right angle triangle ABC it is one, so it is AE over EB. Sine alpha sine ninety minus alpha is cos alpha, so it will be sine alpha over cos alpha equal to AE over EB. Sine alpha over cos alpha is tangent alpha equal to AE over EB, and we want to prove AE equal to two times EB, so we should prove why it is equal to two. Now let's see how can we prove that it is equal to 2. It is alpha, so it is 90 minus alpha. Okay. It is 90 minus alpha, it is alpha. So here, if you use tangent alpha in triangle what? In triangle ACD. In triangle ACD, tangent alpha of this angle is opposite AC over adjacent. Adjacent is CD. And because it is isosceles right angle triangle, AC equal to BC. So because BC is twice CD, also AC is twice CD. So it will be two. So we prove this word and we've solved this problem completely with ratio lemma. As one way, try to solve with Menelaus's theorem. And these two ideas are so much important. Angle bisector is these things. Let me write some formulas you should memorize. MA squared is median through A, B squared over 2 plus C squared over 2 minus A squared over 4. Uh, length of, um, let me tell you, DA internal angle by sector is 2BC over B plus C, cos A over 2. If you want another formula, DA squared is BC minus BD times DC. Suppose AD is perpendicular by sector and it is a squared BC over B plus C whole squared. Uh, D prime A length of external angle by sector is 2BC over B minus C, or let's say absolute value of B minus C sine A over 2. AI is BC over S cos A over 2. AI is in center and lots of other formulas I say. I said 50 important formulas. If you want to learn them, as I said before, feel free to send a message. My WhatsApp number in the description and comments. Okay, let's work on invariant. 
Invariant. Invariant means something is constant. And also one approach is this. Another approach, so something is constant. Another approach is you define, for example, a function. And you say, okay, in each step that function increase and it has upper bound. So after finite number of steps, it will be finished. And another thing, you consider some weights for, for example, some parts, something like that, and you solve the problem. It has three approaches. Most of the time, we have this part, constant things, and we want to solve two problems from Junior SMO, one problem from SUMAG we have, and one problem from HMMT 2023. Harvard MIT Math Tournament, and this one from Stanford Summer Camp. So the first one, it says there are 315 marbles divided into three piles of 81, 115, 119. In each move, all men can either merge several piles into a single pile or divide a pile with an even number of marbles into two equal piles. Can all men divide the marbles into 315 piles each? with a single marble so for this one the answer is no we want to prove at first we try to find some examples try to divide to see is it possible you will see you cannot then we try to prove it is not impossible when you want to prove it is not impossible we should color we should find some property that is always constant so let's see how suppose we have 81 115 119 what are the cases we can merge all of them. If you merge, uh, let's merge first, for example, first and second. 1 plus 5, 6, 8 plus 1, 9, 1, 9, 6, and 1, 1, 9. Okay. So, in this part, um, 115, 196. So, let's consider now second part. 81 plus 1, 1, 9 is 200. And 115, third case. You consider these two things, 81 and 5 plus 9, 14. We have 1, 2, 3, 2, 34. And if you add all of them, it will be 5, uh, 1, 3. So if we merge all of them, then we can't do anything. Because if you want to divide, it should be even into two equal pi. So this one is not good for this one. As you can see, both of them are multiple of what? 7, if you consider 49, 7, 140, 56. Both of them are multiple of 7. And because both of them are multiple of 7, if you do anything, if you because 7 is an odd number, if you divide any of them in the rest of this part, all pies always will be multiple of 7. Because if you divide again, it will be multiple of 7. If you merge two multiple of 7, again, it will be multiple of 7. The next one is multiple of what? Multiple of 5. So contradiction for this part, contradiction for this part. This one will be multiple of what? Multiple of 3. Or nine again contradiction also also this word contradiction so it is impossible when you want to prove something is impossible we use invariant next problem is for junior sm around two 2019 i released the solution of this video this problem in my previous videos you can search that this problem from sumac summer camps i released the solution of this you can use that or if you had question you can send message to my whatsapp number for this stanford summer university mathematics camp uh, I've not released the solutions of HMMT 2023, so let's solve this one. It says, Richard starts with the string HHMMMMTT. A move consists of replacing an instance of HM with MH, HM to MH, replacing an instance of MT to TM, or replacing an instance of TH with HT. Compute the number of possible strings he can end up with after performing zero or more moves. So here, let's consider something. If you have H, H, M, 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 four M's and T, T, one, two, three, four. Okay. We cannot use T, H to H, T because T's are always after M and we don't have any T before that to move. So we can ignore this action. Now for this one, H, M, M, H. You can you can see this as you can move H after M, and here you can move T before M, so you can move T before M and H after M. But we cannot move H for some and T with respect to each other, and I can say H two H's can be in any place, but they should be before two T's. For example, you can say okay, we have how many positions one two three four five six seven eight. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can say I want to have this edge here. This, um, for example, let me tell you. This edge, first edge here, second edge here, this to here, and this to here. How I can do this? This T. First, I move second edge to this place, okay? Let me show you how I can reach this. This is what? This is M, 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 M. So I want to reach this edge. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. I move edge here, second edge. So it will be what? H, M, 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 T, T. Then I move this edge to third place. So it will be M, M, H, M, H, M, T, T. I use this action. Now I use this T to this part. So it will be M, M, H, M, H, T, M, T. Then I move M, T to T, M. It will be M, M, H, M, H, T, T, M. Like this. So I can place two H's and two T's in any place, but two H's should be before two T's. So I say H choose four for places of two H's and two T's. For example, here, 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 here. And the first two places in these four places should be H. Second two places should be T. It will be H choose four. H choose four is what? Is eight, seven, six, five. Over what? Over 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 2, 8, 3, 6, 2. 2 times 5, 10. 10 times 7, 70. So the answer for this problem is 70. Next idea is divisibility and modulo. So let's solve one problem. Many problems we need that. In AMC, in Amy, let's solve this one. Uh, here it says find all positive integers m and such that we have this. You should know around 10 15 rules in divisibility, and if you don't know that, feel free to send a message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. First one integ is integer, so what divides what? n divides 2m minus 1. Second one is integer, so m divides 2n minus 1. And we can say GCD of mn or 1, one thing is that. GCD of MN, so consider it is D. So D divides M because M divides 2N minus 1, so D divides 2N minus 1. D divides N, so D divides 2N. So D divides difference is more D divides 1 because D is positive by the definition of GCD, so it is 1. Now, mm, we can say here. Uh, if we consider 2m plus 2n minus 2 minus 1, we can say n divides that. Why? Because you add 2n to this. We can say also m divides that because you add 2m to this m divides 2m, so the m divides this, so m divides some of them. And because n and m divides this, so their LCM divides, but because their GCD is 1, so their product is 1. One solution is this, it has also another solution without using this method. So mn divides this, so we conclude mn is less than or equal to 2m plus 2n minus 1, because it is not 0, and uh, it is one rule in divisibility, because m and n are positive integers. Now we use something similar to, again, SFFT, the first idea I told you in the beginning of this video. Uh, mn minus 2m minus 2n is less than or equal to negative 1. Then we can say m minus 2 times n minus 2, is less than or equal 4 minus 1, 3. So, m and n are positive integers, okay? So, because m and n are positive integers, we can say what? We can say, um, m, if m is 1, it will be negative 1. Because m is 2. So, let, let's check first m1 here. m1, m2. Let's check small examples. If m is 1, so we know 1 divides this, but n divides 2m minus 1. 2m minus 1 will be 1. So n divides 1, so m equal n equal to 1. It is one answer. If m is 2, so on. m and n are odd numbers, okay? Because here there are odd numbers, we, can, we can't have even numbers. So now we can say m and n are at least 3. So here, let's also check 3. 
Because if there are four, it's not possible. So M is three or N is three. If we check that, then M and N in next step are at least five. And five minus three, three times three, nine is impossible. So we need to only check M three. If M is three, then we say, okay, N divides what? Two times three, six. Minus one, five. So N is one or five. We know if N is one, we like previous one. Uh... Is it if m is one? We know n is one. So here we can say one answer is three m three and five. Let's check it. M three and five. M three divides two times five minus one, nine, and n is five divides two times three six minus one five. So n m one of them is three. The other one is five. So we found M3, N5, and you can also re switch them, M5, N3. So we found three answers for this problem. It has also another solution. Without using MN, if you want to learn also that, feel free to send a message or WhatsApp number in the description and comments. So next idea, which is so much important, and you can solve these homeworks, five, six homeworks for this topic. And if you had questions, you can send a message to my WhatsApp number here. We should try to find one example uh, one example that it is equal to 10. so if you check for example if you consider a you can try a lot of things this is root 2 a cubed plus 3 times b times a minus b greater than or equal to 10. if we consider a as root 2 then in this case this part equal to what uh, root 2 cubed root 2 root 2 to the 4 which is 4 and this one will be what if this one be six it will be okay b times a minus b should be one half a b is root a is root two so if we consider b equal to root two over two uh, because i solved this problem i know this uh, example that what equals to 10. if it is the first time you want to solve the problem pause the video and you try to check different cases to find this example. So it will be root 2 over 2. A minus B will be what again? Root 2 over 2. And this and this will be cancelled. It will be 1 half. So for A equal to root 2 and B equal to root 2 over 2, we reach 10. Then let's use, and we know A is greater than B. Now we use this equality to find good coefficients. So here, we know what we know that the it is root two a cubed plus three over b a minus b a cubed is what if a we know is root two b equal to root two over two now i want to divide all of them to reach one root 2 times a cubed was what was 4 here we've calculated so if we divide this one by 4 i can write root 2 a cubed it, it will be 1 over 4 and we write it 4 times i want to change all of them to equal things the method is this and if you want me to explain more why it is this as i said before you can send message my whatsapp number in the description and comments 1 over b times a minus b is what is 1 over root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2, which will be this one, which will be 2. So I should divide this by 2 to reach 1, 1 over 2, b a minus b. But because I should reach coefficient 3, how many 1 half? We reach 3, 6, a minus b, 6 times, times. And now we use AMGM for these 10 terms. And we can see that this equal to the thing that the problem has. It will be greater than or equal to 10 times um, a hun. But what one important thing, one important thing I forgot. Here when we multiply a cubed and b a minus b won't cancel. So let's use something first to get rid of that, then we can apply. So here it is what b a minus b. So here because I want to use this, let's focus first on root 2a cubed. We can say it is equal to root 2b plus a minus b cubed. And we know that 
It is root 2 by AMGM. It is greater than or equal to root B times A minus B cubed. Okay, so uh, it will be what? 8 root 2 times square root of B cubed times A minus B cubed. Okay, now. Here we can say, let's consider this one t. We want to prove t by t is at least 10. Uh, t is what? t is this part, and we prove root 2 a cube is at least 8 root 2 b cubed a minus b cubed plus 3 over this part, b times a minus b. Now we should calculate each term and equality holds. Let me add a new page. Okay, if a equal to root 2, let's consider this case. Suppose a equal to root 2 and b equal to root 2 over 2. At first, root b cubed times a minus b cubed is what? Root b cubed is root 2 over 2 cubed. A minus B is also root 2 over 2 cubed. It is what? Root 2 over 2 to the 6. Square root of that is root 2 over 2 cubed. Okay. And we can multiply it by this. So let's calculate this first. It will be root 2, root 2, root 2 over 2 times 2 times 2. We can cancel these two with this. So it will be root 2 over 4. Okay. It will be root 2 over 4. So we've calculated this part. And if we calculate 1 over b times a minus b, it will be what? It will be 1 over root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2, which we can cancel this, and it will be 2. So we divide this by 2 to reach 1, and if we multiply root 2 times this, okay, root 2 times root 2 over 4, is one half it's two over four one half so it is one half we consider two times that so let me copy this one i want to reach all of them to one they should be equal or using what amgm why well, it doesn't copy okay so let's write it so Root 2 times this will be what will be 1 half. So I write 2 root 2 times b cubed. It is equal to b cubed a minus b cubed. Root 2 times this is 1 half. 2 times that is 1. Because I want to write, reach 8, so I write it 4 times. b cubed times a minus b cubed. And then I write this. 1 over b times a minus b is what is 2. So I should divide it by 2. It will be 1 over 2 times b a minus b. I should write it because I should want to reach 3. I write it 6 times. 6 times. And this one, 4 times. Now I use AMGM for 10 variables. By using AMGM, so if you want to find the coefficient by chance, it will be so much hard. But with this strategy, you can find related and good coefficient. We will find them. We will figure out not only by chance. It will be 10 times 10th root of 2 root 2 to the power of 4 times this part to the power of 4. So it will be b cubed, a minus b cubed squared times one half to the power of six, one over b to the power of six, one over a minus b to the power of six, okay? And you can see one over b to the power of six and b cubed to the power of two will be canceled because it will be b to the six, it will be a minus b to the six will be canceled with this. So if we simplify more, it will be 10 times, 10th root of two to the four, square root of 2 to the 4 will be 2 squared times 1 over 2 to the 6. And as you can see, 2 to the 4 times 2 squared will be 2 to the 6. will be canceled by this. It's 10th root of 1, which is 10. So we proved 
that t is at least 10, it was the thing that the problem wants by finding coefficients like this. These problems are similar. As I said, there are around 40 problems like this. I have those problems. For all of them, you should find good coefficients. You can use AMGM. And those things are so much important for your exam. If you want to learn other important ideas in geometry, algebra, number theory, combinatorics that are useful, SMO, AMC, uh, and BMO, which these two exams are for UK and USA, and they are the most prestigious national exam and so much good for your CV. If you want to learn important ideas to be able to pass those exams, as I said before, feel free to send message to my WhatsApp number in the description and comments. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day. Bye.